Hey everybody, Tree here coming to you with an informative video about the deception in Islam. What all non-Muslims should know. Now before I go into this video, let me give you a backstory to why I chose this topic. As many of you know, I am anti-Islam. I have never spoke well of this religion and I never will speak well of this religion. I have studied a lot of religions, and out of all of those religions, none of them are as criminal, malicious, cruel, perverted, and deceiving as Islam. When I decided to do a response to the girl on girl video titled Muslim Feminist, The Biggest Lie Ever Told, many of my subscribers were posting in the comments section to Kia. She's committing to Kia Tree! Close to 100 of my subscribers were telling all of us that she was practicing Takiya. Now, I know all about Takiya, and I was under the impression that this was mainly practiced by Shia Muslims when they thought their life was in danger. Shia Muslims would practice Takiya when confronted by Sunni Muslims. Sunni Muslims also practiced Takiya, but only when they felt threatened or forced. This is the reason why I didn't think that Amani was practicing Takiya because she wasn't in a position where she was either threatened or forced. I mean, look at this tiny little white girl sitting beside big old Amani. <laughs> There's no way she felt threatened or forced to commit Takiya. But then, all of a sudden, a shitload of Muslims came into my comments section in this video and started posting lies after lies after lies about Islam. And I'm not talking about small lies, folks. I mean big, huge, gigantic lies. So after doing more research, turns out that my subscribers were right. Not only was Amani practicing Takiya, but Muslims don't need to be forced or threatened to lie to non-Muslims. They practice Takiya and other deceptive tactics as means of deceiving non-Muslims and portraying Islam as a peaceful, loving religion. That way, they don't appear to be a threat to Western civilization. If we as Americans don't view the religion of Islam and its followers as a threat to our way of life, we will let our guard down, start defending them, and allowing this ideology to invade our country. Once that happens, we will open ourselves to be conquered by Muslims and have our country turned into an Islamic state. I'm going to help prevent that by teaching you, non-Muslims, the tricks Muslims play on us. That way, you won't turn out like this asshat and make a fool out of yourself on national TV defending Islam. So let's begin. The four deceptive methods Muslim use in order to viciously deceive non-Muslims are Tikiya, Kitman, Tauria, and Murana. Let's start with Tikiya. Tikiya is saying something that isn't true or lying for Islam. There are several forms of lying to non-believers that are permitted under certain circumstances, the best known being Tikiya. These circumstances are typically those that advance the cause of Islam. In some cases, by gaining the trust of non-believers in order to draw out their vulnerability and defeat them. This is the reason why I have zero tolerance with Islamic apologists. These dumb people are drinking the Muslim Kool-Aid and come to anti-Islamic YouTube channels defending this barbaric religion and their followers. Muslims pretend to be friendly and helpless to non-Muslims in hopes that they will defend them and punish those who speak out against Islam. This is why you hear people say, Aw, I have some good Muslim friends, and they're very nice to me. Not all Muslims are crazy like those 9-11 terrorists. Oh yeah? Let's read a passage in the Quran pertaining to Muslims having non-Muslim friends. Surah 3, verse 28. Let not believers take disbelievers as allies rather than believers. And whoever does that has nothing with Allah except when taking precaution against them in prudence. And Allah warns you of himself, and to Allah is the destination. 
what this is saying is that initially Muslims should not take non-Muslims as friends, especially over Muslims. However, a Muslim can have non-Muslims as friends as a means of taking precaution to avoid danger or risk in non-Islamic countries. You see, in Islamic countries, Muslims are to have other Muslims as their friends instead of non-Muslims. Why? Because Islam is the religion of the land and Muslims are the majority. However, for Western countries, especially here in America, they are the minority. So they have to play nice and intermingle with other non-Muslims because it's not in their best interest to only associate themselves with other Muslims. Because if they do this, Homeland Security and the FBI will be on their asses in a millisecond. So you have to ask yourself, are Muslims being friends with us because they want to or because the Quran told them to as a means of deception? Let's look at another verse in the Quran about Takiya. Surah 16 verse 106. Whoever disbelieves in Allah after his belief except for one who is forced to renounce his religion while his heart is secure in faith. But those who willingly open their breasts to disbelief, upon them is wrath from Allah, and for them is a great punishment. This is the reason why I thought Muslims have to be forced to lie, i.e. practice takiyya. But turns out, this is not true, because based upon Surah 3, verse 28, a Muslim can lie in order to gain allies slash friends in order to seem like a team player rather than an adversary. This is the reason why Amani was telling lies after lies after lies to Hannah in order to appear peaceful and friendly. And it worked too. Go back and look at that video. Hannah was eating those lies up like chocolate, honey. She was buying all that bullshit coming out of Monty's mouth. One of my subscribers described this scene perfectly. He said, that white girl just got drunk on tequila. <laughs> Not only was this funny, but it was also true. Let me show you another example of a Muslim practicing tequila on my channel. So here we have a Muslim chick being very deceptive. Even her name is deceptive. She has the nerve to call herself <laughs> Sarah Boo. Really girl? Really? Sarah Boo? Now, most Muslim women who comment on my videos display their Islamic name like Rashida Ahmed, Khadija Hassan, Fatima Mohammed, but this woman is playing the wolf in sheep clothing act. She picked a very soft and submissive name as to appear gentle. Then on top of that, she's playing the victim card in her reply probably hoping to get some sympathy from a few dumb people who don't know any better. This is how Muslims recruit Islamic apologists. Some beta guy or beta girl is going to look at this and say, Aw, the poor Muslim. Look at how awful her life is. And the next thing you know, they start defending them without realizing that they just been played. But see, my subscribers know better, honey. They nor I attended your fake pity party. We gave you the side eye when reading your crap. Listen, listen to these lies this chick typed on my comment section. Check this out. I don't even know what to say. What will you get if you say all these things about us? Just leave us alone. What? Are you high? Leave you alone? Bitch, leave us alone. You and your Muslim posse came over here and start fucking with us. Y'all blew up our buildings. The Muslim rape gang went inside the EU and started raping women and children. Muslims cut a priest's head off in the Catholic Church. Your Muslim men are killing gays. Y'all came on our land and started tearing shit up. We didn't mess with you. Muslims came to our country and started raping, killing, 
robbing and destroying sections of our cities. And when we fought back, y'all want to play the victim card by crying, leave us alone. Girl, shut up and put the crack pipe down. Anywho, then she goes on to say, we believe in whatever we want to. No shit. Can't you see how it is hurting us all? Those things media say about us? You mean the truth? You hate the media? Well, some of the media outlets are telling the truth about you and your religion. You hate it because it delays Islamic leaders' plans to take over the world. You don't like that, huh, honey? Oh, well, that's too damn bad. I couldn't even watch the full video. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't watch it because it's full of facts. I take your own holy book and show you how you are inferior to men. I show you how your husband is allowed to beat you. I show you verses in the Quran where your husband has sexual dominance over you and why you must cover up. I show you the truth and you can't handle it, girl. But you know what? I think you're lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, girl. I think you're lying. I believe you saw the entire video and now your butt hurt. Yep, you are butt hurt. That's why you posted this leave us alone garbage on my comment section because you saw the entire video and now your ass is on fire because of it. But don't worry, hon. Ain't nothing a little Preparation H can't handle. We are respecting everybody's religion. Why can't people respect ours and our opinion? <laughs> oh my God. This girl and this Takia. Oh my God. Look, girl. Because your religion revolves around a pedophile who instructed his followers to rape, murder, conquer, enslave, and torture millions of people of all nationalities worldwide. Islam is cancer. And the truth is chemotherapy. Deal with it. Is covering up your body a bad thing? Yes. It's a bad thing when you have to do it in order to prevent from getting raped by Muslim men. Do you know how stupid it is to blame women for Muslim men being rapey? They have barbaric tendencies. And instead of them getting psychiatric therapy or taking medication, no, 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 no. no. You have to cover up. No, you have to cover up. Do you see how stupid that is? Really? Do you not see this? That's like you having a headache, but I have to take the aspirin. Does that make sense to you, girl? It shows how precious women are. <laughs> girl, those are lies, a.k.a. Takiya, that Muslim men tell you in order for you to sign up for Islam. Muslim men practice the kia on Muslim women in order to add them to their harem. So Muslim men are going to tell you and other non-Muslim women a bunch of lies in order to reel you into their collection of wives. You see, y'all call it takia. We call it pimping. I don't even know what more to say. <laughs> you said enough. I hope you got whatever you wanted to get by saying all those hurtful things about us. Oh, boy. So here's my response to her. Oh, are you committed to Kia, honey? Or are you that delusional? I'm going to choose the first one. t t t, -t Kia! <laughs> For those of you who don't know, there's a Chia Pet commercial. And the, um, the theme song of the Chia Pet commercial go... Ch -ch 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 just, just Google or put Chia Pet theme song in the uh, search box of YouTube and you'll see the commercial. It's an old, old commercial. And the theme song goes, Ch -ch 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 and I took the Ch -ch 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 -chia out of there and I put Ch -ch 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 <laughs> oh, I thought it was cute. I thought it was a cute switch of words. So that's why I use it like that. So she responds back to me, and this is what she says. That's so childish. You should at least try seeing it from our perspective. Why? 
I am civilized, honey. Your religion is barbaric. Why do I need to see it from your perspective? How would you like it if a killer asked you to see things from his perspective? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. You do see things from his perspective. <laughs> My bad. Carry on. So now I want 100% confirmation that she's practicing Takiya. So I asked her a question in reference to proven facts that even religious Muslim leaders admit to. Muslim scholars admit to what I'm about to ask her. If she denies this, it means she's definitely practicing Takiya and I don't need to waste any more of my time with her. So I post, let me ask you something, Muslim woman. I just want a yes or no answer. Do you agree that a 50-year-old man should have sex with a 9-year-old girl? And she says, no, of X, I don't. I don't know what that means as far as X is concerned. Maybe it's a Muslim thing. I don't know. But anyway, and I know where this is going. In the, no, it is not true <laughs> at all. I am a Muslim and I know my religion more than you do. I've been studying it my whole life. <laughs> Oh yeah, you definitely know your religion, girl. You definitely know your religion. You know that the Quran and the Hadiths gives you permission to lie to me when confronted, okay? And that's what you're doing right now. Notice how she never denied practicing Takiya when I confronted her with it. She just brushed me off as childish. And that's that's an SJW move, you know what I'm saying? That's what they do, okay? And that's what she did. But I noticed how she didn't deny that she was practicing Takiya. And wham! The next thing I know, she does it, okay? But just to be on the safe side, I ask her again about the actions of her prophet. So you're saying that your prophet Muhammad did not marry Aisha at the age of six and had sex with her at the age of nine. Are you saying that this didn't happen? Here we go. Here we go. Takiya. Yes, I am. You should really start reading more. <laughs> I can't even finish this sentence without laughing. Okay, hold on, hold on. You should really start reading more about him and get to know how good he was. <laughs> Folks, the jokes write themselves. The jokes write themselves. <laughs> how good Muhammad was. Oh, my God. Now, listen, listen, listen. Now, she's insulting my intelligence, okay? Not only did she deny that Mohammed married a six-year-old girl and had sex with her at the age of nine, but she said that he was a good man. A good man, Mohammed, okay? Honey, if that ain't some big fat tequila, I don't know what is. We are talking Godzilla-sized tequila. <laughs> It doesn't get any bigger than this, okay? Just in case any of you want to read about the life of Muhammad and everything he did and everything he was about, check out this book called The Life of Muhammad. This book was written by an Arab historian. It has been validated and authenticated by sheikhs and imams in the Islamic countries. This is the oldest biographical account of Muhammad, translated from Arabic to English and is available to the general public. Now, I need to warn you, though, it's not an easy read, and I highly suggest that you read this book along with the Quran to get a better understanding of both Muhammad and Islam. That way, you know for a fact, you can fact check me on the things I am saying about him, and this can be verified in this book. So when someone comes to you with this nonsense, you don't have to go back and forth with them on the life of Muhammad because they know what you know, except they're lying about it, okay? So now that I know she confirmed my suspicion, 
I'm done with this conversation. You see, I don't argue with liars. It's pointless because they will never admit to the truth and you'll never win. It's a huge waste of time. That's why when I see them on my channel, I'm not nice to them. Uh uh, I admit it. You can see it. You can go to the comment section and see that I am not nice to them. I'm not nice to liars, folks. I'm not nice to deceivers. I'm not nice to con artists. And that's what these people are. So anyway, I'm done with this chick. I tell her what I'm going to do with our conversation and I end it. I want to thank you for showing my subscribers how Muslims commit to Kia. I will be using our discussion in my next video. It is important to me that I show my subscribers how Muslims don't need to be forced to commit to Kia. You people do it as often as needed. You lie whenever you feel the need to lie. My time with you is now over. Go tell your lies to Kia to someone who doesn't know your religion the way I do. So folks, that's how Muslims use Takiya when talking with or to non-Muslims. Now let's take a look at the next deceptive method Muslims use on non-Muslims. Kidman. Kidman is lying by omission. This is done a lot when quoting the Quran. Kidman comes from the Arabic word katama and means to hide or to conceal. Often, Kidman results in a gross distortion of the truth. For example, in the comments section, I was watching a debate between a Christian and a Muslim. The Christian said she had heard that Allah told his followers to conquer and kill all non-believers. The Muslim man said that this was not true. He said that inside the Quran, there are lots of verses stating that Allah loves everyone, but favor those who believe in him more. Then he quoted the Quran, Surah 9, verse 5, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Now, of course, the Christian didn't have a copy of the Quran to fact check him, but I did. So I opened up the book and went to that verse and this is what I read. And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. But if they should repent, establish prayer and give zakah, let them go on their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Now, does this sound nice to you? In other words, after Ramadan, go kill the pagans, seek them out, surround them, and capture them, hide in places where they frequent, and ambush them. However, if they should express remorse for worshiping the wrong god or gods, Allow them to pray to Allah and make financial payment, which is a payoff or bribe. Once they have done all of this, let them go. After all, Allah is forgiving and merciful. <laughs> now, when I confronted this Muslim man and told him that he excluded 90% of the verse and I typed the verse in its complete context, he used the old trick of you don't know Arabic, so this English version has been translated incorrectly. And now we're back to Takiya again, folks. But let me address this Arabic to English nonsense. I want you all to know that when you read the Quran in English, understand you're reading the PG rated version. Oh, yeah. Because I was told by an Islamic scholar that the actual Arabic text is much worse. It's easy for Muslims to play this game. They know that you don't know Arabic and most of the time they don't know it either. However, this won't stop them from using this excuse as a means of deceiving you. Moving on to the third deceptive method Muslims use on non-Muslims. Tariya. Tawriya is intentionally creating a false impression or creative lying in virtually any circumstances. For example, if Sally asks Abdul for a dollar and he says, Sorry Sally, I don't have a dollar. 
I don't have a dime on me. But in his wallet, he has a stack of $20 bills. That's practicing Tauria. You see, it's true. Abdul doesn't have a dollar or a dime on him, but he does have a large stack of $20 bills. He made it appear as if he was broke, but this is far from the case. Abdul creatively lied about not having any money, and this is Tariya, which is encouraged and acceptable in Islam. Here's another example of Tariya. This is a video of an anti-Semitic Muslim girl at the University of California, San Diego, questioning a Jewish professor by the name of David Howerwitz. Watch this. Yes. Good evening. I uh, just wanted to say thank you for coming to campus tonight and uh, presenting your point of view. It's always valuable to have two sets of uh, views going on at the same time. Um, very useful. This Muslim is wasting no time with practicing Tawriya. She goes on a spiel about how good it is to get two points of views and then finish it off by saying it's very useful. Now, this may seem like a compliment, but it's not. The information she received is going to be very useful for her in reference to fighting the Jews, but not useful in learning and living with Jews peacefully. See how clever that is? That's Tauria. Now, she's also starting off appearing very nice, but don't worry. <laughs> that won't last long. Watch this. Uh, my name is Jumana Imad Musa Ahmed Al Bahri, um, and I'm a student here at UCSD. Uh, I was uh, reading your literature. I found that much more interesting than the talk. See what I mean? See what I mean? Now she's throwing shade. She was like, um, your hour long lecture, Mr. Jew, was a waste of my time. I think you should have kept all of that and just passed out your literature because that was more interesting to me than your boring ass speech. Oh my God. Shade, shade, shade. And um, I found some interesting things about the MSA, which is an organization that's very active on campus and it is hosting uh, our annual Hitler Youth Week. Should come out to those events. Okay, the MSA means Muslim Student Association, and the Muslim Student Association is hosting Hitler Youth Week. This Muslim girl hates Jews. She's an anti Semite, and she took it upon herself to not only confront a Jewish professor, but she also disrespects his QA session by inviting students to participate in Hitler Youth Week. Hitler Youth Week! This is an anti Semitic Muslim organization hosting a Youth Week for students who align themselves with Hitler and the killings of Jews. So, um, yeah. Tell me again how these moderate Muslims differ from radical Muslims again? Um, if you could clarify the connection between the MSA and jihad terrorist networks, because yeah, you last, last I checked, we had to do our own fundraising, and uh, we never get help from anyone. So if you could clarify the connection between UCSD's MSA, or if you don't have such information, if you could connect other MSAs on UCs, because the connection wasn't too clear in the pamphlet, just if you could clarify. Will you uh, condemn Hamas here and now? Aw, suck it, suck it now! Professor Harowitz is about to open a can of whoop ass on this chick! I'm sorry, what? Will you condemn Hamas? Would I condemn Hamas? As a terrorist organ, genocide organ. Are you asking me to put myself on a cross? She's in America, folks! She's not in Palestine! If she was against Hamas, she would condemn it! She's safe and sound here in America! But she's practicing Tauria by saying, are you asking me to put myself on a cross? <laughs> Look at what she just did. She's using a Christian symbolism to present a false impression of being a victim. A Muslim made it appear that her answer will cause her to be crucified like Jesus. 
She has no respect for Christians, but she understands that most religious people are horrified over the way Jesus was crucified. So she uses that in connection with herself in order to avoid answering the question. Now that's some creative line right there, folks. It doesn't get any better than this. And that's what Tauria is all about. So you won't. I, I actually have had this experience many times. You didn't read the pamphlet because the pamphlet is chapter and verse. Uh, the main connection is that the MSA is part of the Muslim Brotherhood network as revealed in the documents. I don't think you understood what anyway, I meant by that. I is... meant if I say something, I'm sure that I will be arrested. Now that's straight up to Kia, folks. That's to Kia. We have free speech here in the United States. No one is going to arrest her if she condemns Hamas. Hell, condemning Hamas is a good thing, but she's not going to do that. So instead of telling the truth, she lies about getting arrested if she express her opinion. She's not going to get arrested if she supports Hamas, and she's definitely not going to get arrested if she condemns Hamas. But like the professor said, the Muslim Student Association is part of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a terrorist organization. So here we have our moderate, so-called peaceful Muslim who not only support Islamic terrorism, but is connected to it. And she's right here in a good old U.S. of A attending our university. For reasons of Homeland Security. So if you could please just answer my question. If you condemn Hamas, Homeland Security will if arrest you. If I support you. Hamas, because your question forces me to condemn Hamas, if I support Hamas, well, I look really bad. if you bad. don't condemn Hamas, obviously you support it. <laughs> Zing! Case closed. <laughs> I have had this experience, uh, I give you, I had this experience at UC Santa Barbara where there were 50 members of the Muslim Students Association sitting right in the rows there. And throughout my hour talk, I kept asking them, will you condemn Hezbollah and Hamas? Uh, and none of them would. And then when the question period came, the president of the Muslim Students Association was the first person to ask questions. And I said, you know, before you start, will you condemn Hezbollah? And he said, well, that question is too complicated for a yes-no answer. So I said, okay, I'll put it to you this way. I'm a Jew. The head of Hezbollah has said that he hopes that we will gather in Israel so he doesn't have to hunt us down globally. For it or against it? For it. Thank you. Thank you for coming and showing everybody what's, what's here. And you're wearing a, a terrorist uh, neckerchief. If you understood... Uh, you, know, no, you didn't hear the lady. You Could you please question, answer my question? You, get a, you don't get to make a speech. And there you have it, folks. Look at your moderate Muslim being all peaceful. But notice how she practiced both taqiyya and tawriya before finally admitting the truth. The link to this video is in the description box. I highly recommend that you watch it again without my commentary, and you'll see for yourself why these people can't be trusted. And finally, the fourth deceptive method Muslims use on non-Muslims is maruna. Maruna means blending in by setting aside some practices of Islam or Sharia in order to appear modernized. Maruna is perhaps the biggest deceptive practice by Muslims today, as it allows them to be flexible regarding the commands of their faith in order to properly blend in with the society around them. Muslims practice Maruna in the same way a chameleon changes colors to avoid detection. Muslims will sometimes shave off their beards, wear Western clothing, or even drink alcohol to blend in with non-Muslims. As long as they can justify that the ultimate goal will be seen as helpful to the dominance of Islam, they are off the hook 
for those verses within the Quran that forbids this behavior. Surah 2 verse 106 supports this. If we revoke a verse or cause it to be forgotten, we will replace it by a better one or similar. Do you know that Allah is over all things competent? This means that Muslims may forget some of the commands in the Quran as long as they are pursuing a better command. Muslims striving to advance Islam can deviate from their Islamic laws in order to cause non-Muslims to lower their guard and place their trust in their Muslim counterpart. Another common way of using Maruna is for a Muslim to marry a non-Muslim or to behave like a non-Muslim so their true agenda will not be suspected. It is no secret how I feel about Islam and those who follow it. Frankly, I just don't trust them. And after learning these four deceptive techniques they can use in order to further Islam, do you blame me? Christians are told not to lie, and this can be found in the Bible, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. You can tell that most Christians hold true to this verse. If you remember the Oregon shooter who asked the students in the class if any of them were Christians, the victims who said yes were shot in the head. The ones who said no were shot in the leg. Even when facing death, most Christians are loyal to their faith. So let's transfer the same analogy to Muslims. According to their holy book, they are allowed to lie, deceive, and appear to be friendly. It is okay for them to shed their Islamic skin and appear to be modernized in order to blend in like the rest of us. They can profess their love for us with their mouths, but hate us with their hearts. The sad thing is... Since these deceptive practices are permitted and often encouraged within Islam, we may never know where their allegiance truly lies. However, the more we learn about Islam, the better we are at protecting ourselves from this dangerous ideology. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe so that you can be notified about future videos uploaded to this channel. If you would like to support my work, you can make a one-time donation or sign up for my monthly contribution through my website. Click on the donate box on the screen to be taken to that page. I will also promote a link in the description box. This is Tree from Tree of Logic. Thanks for watching my video and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.